That's a nice way to wake up, isn't it? <laughs> if only we all had Scrappy to wake us up in the morning. Most of us, however, have mornings that are a bit more like this. Four out of five of us live in cities, at least in the developed world, and we love cities. They give us jobs, they lower our environmental footprint, but they also increase our anxiety levels and our levels of stress. So, what do we do about that? <laughs> Take two hours of this and call me in the morning. <laughs> oh, actually, can we just back that up again? Because we had some, we had some, a couple of slide issues. So let's just go back to the, let's go back to the um, city. Bear with me. Can you bear with me? <laughs> Live in cities. Four out of five of us live in cities in the developed world. Oh, four, should yeah. take four out of five. Should we go back to the traffic jam? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No, we went back to your view. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I just really wanted to see that sunrise again. Um, so most of us actually have mornings that are more like this. Four out of five of us in the developed world live in cities, and we love cities. They give us jobs, they lower our environmental footprint, but they also increase our levels of anxiety and stress. Well, there's a remarkable new treatment that can lower our stress and anxiety, can increase our concentration, focus, creativity, and memory, can reduce our need for strong painkillers, speed healing, and lower the amount of time we spend brooding on negative thoughts. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Just take two hours of this and call me in the morning. <laughs> now, funny thing is, most doctors, at least here in the West, don't prescribe nature as a treatment. Um, it's just not something that, that, they, that they prescribe. You know, but honestly, do we need a doctor to tell us that nature's good for us? Don't we know this intrinsically already? Well, yes, but few of us seek it out regularly as therapy. 90% of our time, at least here in North America, is spent indoors. Eight hours on the computer, on our smartphones. Before we know it, the day's gone by, we're back in the car, and well, maybe we'll, tomorrow we'll take that sorely needed walk in the park. But what's so special about getting a nature fix? Let's check out the visual aspects first. One theory posits that nature scenes appeal to our basic survival needs. It's an evolutionarily derived natural aesthetic that reduces our stress more than, say, looking at modern buildings do. Other theories suggest that it's the curves, contours, and context of nature scenes that invite our minds to, to free play instead of fixate and fatigue. And it's that visual romping around that rejuvenates us. So let's, why don't we um, dive into the brain and check out what researchers have been finding there. So using functional magnetic resonance imagery, which tracks brain activity um, in relation to oxygenated blood flow, we can see that looking at nature scenes activates many parts of the brain. Now it's early days, research-wise, but we do see one interesting finding is that many of these regions of activated, um, many activated regions of the brain are rich in opioid receptors. Now our opioid system processes pleasure, among other things, and so looking at nature scenes may be like taking a little, releasing a little bit of morphine into our brains. And you thought we were just looking at pretty pictures, didn't you? Another finding that's interesting is when we look at urban scenes, we tend to blink more than when we look at nature scenes. And that's an indication that urban scenes take more mental effort to, to process. 
Well, nature is incredibly diverse with so many different habitats. What kind of nature scenery relaxes us and calms us the most? This is using mobile electroencephalography, EEG headsets. Our team, with funding from National Geographic, is exploring this question, looking at nature, moving imagery of nature and urban scenes to see how we can create desired patterns of brain activity. For example, alpha wave rhythms in our frontal lobes that correlate with a relaxed mental state. This is all part of an emerging subdiscipline that I call neurobiophilia the science of how nature engages the brain. Now, I love that we have all this um, technology to help us create powerful tools for anyone locked indoors, be they astronauts to office workers, hospital patients to the elderly, and perhaps one of the most nature-deprived audiences, inmates, particularly in solitary confinement. In fact, this EEG work sprang from another project I'm involved in called the Blue Room. The Blue Room, led by ecologist Nalini Nadkarni at Oregon's Snake River Correctional Institution, allows inmates to look at nature videos for an hour in their recreation yard to voluntarily to lower their stress and violence. One inmate I spoke with, a notorious gang member, notoriously violent, said that looking at the videos for the first time it made him weep. It made him realize and remember that there was so much beauty in the world that he could still turn his life around. And, and it shifted this man's life perspective, recalibrated him in a way that, you know, shifted his whole personal timeline in a way that no other treatment had. But nature is more than just pretty pictures. It's a multi-sensorial pharmacopoeia of microbes, sights, sounds, tastes, and smells. For example, Swedish researchers have found just listening to nature sounds restores us from stressful um, situations 40% faster than, say, listening to urban sounds. Japanese researchers have found, by studying a practice known as Shinrin-yoku, forest therapy, that when we walk through evergreen forests, we breathe in aromatic volatile compounds called phytoncides. And these can boost our immune system, lower stress hormones, and increase our ability to fight cancers and, and ward off viruses. Now, and other researchers find that sunlight triggers the production of vitamin D and serotonin levels, which can ele elevate our moods, and nitric oxide, which can boost blood flow. Let's not forget about those microbes in the air and in the soil. Finnish researchers have found that teenagers living in higher biodiversity areas have a greater concentration, a higher divers di diversity of gamma proteobacteria on their skin, which can help combat inflammation. So I love, and you know, knowing all this about nature, it becomes much more than just a, a design aesthetic, a potted plant. It becomes a health essential. And sure, we can sur bring, surround ourselves with all sorts of nature's extracts, the sun lamp at the work desk, and the oil of cedar, and the ar aromatherapy going, and then the VR, and the nature screensaver, and, and we can do this and reap some benefits. But their potency is reduced without first-hand experience. How about reweaving real biodiversity back into our built environment and making a more concerted effort to get out into our blue and green spaces? Sorry, boss, I just got to go. It's for my internal microbes and my mental health. <laughs> I love that we have all this technology to help us diligently um, you know, extract nature's benefits, particularly for those audiences with few other options. But as much as, as adept as we can become at recreating nature, I think real, the real thing will always win out. For me, it's those feelings I get from nature's, all of nature's unscripted wonders. The feelings of when I, when I put my feet in the sand at the seashore, or when I dive into the ocean and sidle up to some strange marine creature like a giant ocean sunfish, or when I come across a, a beautiful flower that's 
opening itself up to the morning sun, or feeling the nighttime air envelop me under a starry sky. It's that primal feeling of awe and gratitude that we are part of a four billion year old story, not written in binary computer code, but in ancient messy spaghetti code, helically wound into every one of our diverse habitats, many that we've barely even begun to explore, but all that are essential to our survival. It's the realization that we, life is not a human monologue, but a wild chorus of microbes, fungi, algae, plants, animals, rocks, soil, water, air, that all comprise our mental sanity. So grab your kids, your family, your friends, your employees, and your boss, and let's walk all this talk outside and remember what it truly takes to be human.